Hello and welcome to another episode of the Business of Business podcast. This is Roy, your host. Of course, we're the podcast that brings you a wide variety of guests that talk about a bunch of diverse uh, subjects that have to do with business. This is going to be our third installment of Google Ads, and uh, we're lucky. Uh, Bobby with Cigna Marketing is back with us. Bobby, welcome back. Thank you, Roy. I really appreciate it. Happy yeah. to be back. Yeah, yeah. This is awesome. Uh, you know, what we've decided is to uh, take a little different approach in, in addition to the uh, normal full-length episodes that we release on Tuesday is we're having this segment that we're going to release, you know, probably on a Thursday that will uh, kind of get into subjects a little bit deeper. They're going to be shorter, but give you some actionable item. And uh, so this is going to be over. We're still talking about Google ads and uh, we've talked in the beginning about targeting and how to build or, uh, you know, how to get started. And then we've talked about the different campaign types. And so today we're going to talk about how to build the campaign. So, Bobby, I'll let you take it from there. Awesome. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know even on, on the, the last uh, segment of this, we touched a little bit on kind of just building out a search campaign, super high level. Yeah. But here we'll, we'll dive much deeper. So, okay. Awesome. So, yeah, I, uh, just to recap, some of the three main types of campaigns will be a search campaign, a display campaign or a video campaign. And so we'll start with the search campaign first. Um, so this is with the understanding that this person has already done their keyword research. They already kind of know exactly, you know, who they want to target and all that good stuff. And so what I really like to do as a process is actually before you even open up the interface, you can use a Google doc, you can use a piece of paper. It doesn't matter, but you want to outline and structure your campaign, kind of just put it on paper first. Okay. Um, so it's just an outline. You would say, you know, you would say, hey, campaign number one, it's going to contain these types of keywords. And then with those keywords, you'll want to add them kind of like in buckets, or almost like folders where they're nicely themed. Okay. And so as an example, say, say I'm a, re a garage door repair company and I want to target two different cities out here. Say I want to target Phoenix and Chandler. Um, people, instead of just buying garage door repair as a keyword, I want to even get a little bit more themed out and say garage door repair Phoenix and then garage door repair Chandler. Now those two keywords, I don't want to add them in the same folder. I actually want to keep them in, in separate ad groups. Yeah. And the reason why is because then the ads that are I create in those ad groups, I can say directly in the ad garage door repair Chandler yeah. or gra garage door yeah. repair Phoenix, or I could say top gr garage door repair company in Chandler. Yeah. You know, it, it can be very themed out in that sense. Yeah. And I think um, I just, so that's that type of process that you carry throughout. Yeah. I was just going to say that uh, yeah. if you go back and listen to one of the previous episodes, that's something you talk about that, you know, I've never thought about that is excellent advice is, you know, and because I have to admit I'm guilty of this is just like dumping all the keywords into one campaign and, yeah. and, and mine were, <laughs> mine are pretty general anyway, but you know, if you do have specifics like that, it's great to set up different campaigns so you can write copy or develop, mm -hmm. uh, YouTube content or whatever you're doing that specifically targets that group. So anyway, didn't mean to interrupt you. Just wanted yeah. to say that, yeah, that's why mm -hmm. it's so awesome for me to uh, do this show because like I say, I, I learn something every, every time we get on here, I learn something. But anyway, go ahead, Bobby, take it back. Oh yeah. No, and it's, yeah. it's, it's incredibly, incredibly important because um, what, what you're looking to do. It, so by doing that, you're, you're basically delivering, an ad result to whatever to exactly what the person was searching for. Right. So you're answering their question directly. Um, how that translates into better results is that you'll actually have a higher click through rate, yeah. meaning your ad will, will definitely stand out from the competition in that sense. Um, and that in turn will give you a better quality score. Okay. And so each keyword is, has a quality score measured from one to 10. And essentially this is Google's uh, relevance metric to, to let us know how relevant is our keyword uh, compared to our ad copy and then compared to our landing page. Okay. If we have those three assets highly relevant, then we get rewarded with a really great quality score, which in turn actually drives down our cost per click. Okay. So they basically reward us by not having to, I mean, if we are bidding $6 a click, we may actually pay only $3 for it, typically about half. Wow, um, okay. Yeah. If we have a keyword that has a bad quality score, they're going to charge you six dollars a click. <laughs> they're going to max you out. <laughs> okay. So, so yeah. So that's that's that part of the process as far as 
of defining your account structure. And this is this is why we get into account structure because it absolutely matters. And to what you mentioned, Roy, earlier, you definitely want to stay away from just adding just keywords all into the into one folder because then uh, we talked about relevancy, it affects that, but then it's also kind of hard to manage uh, bids uh, when you're running the campaign and you're running um, uh, them over time, um, you want to have control over bids and in a way that's efficient. So it's much easier to control your bids at the ad group level compared to having to, to add a, a bid on every single keyword. Cause you know, that, that can get pretty, pretty crazy, especially if you're buying two, three hundred, four hundred keywords, okay. um, managing an account like that is kind of, yeah. that's, that's, not, that's not possible at that point. So by segmenting all these keywords into really nicely themed ad groups, you can control the bids at the ad group level. Okay. So, so yeah, so once you have that on paper and you're happy with it, then go into the interface and start building that campaign out. Um, in terms of campaign settings, I mean, there's a, there's a lot there, but some of the major ones are definitely going to be your location settings. Um, you can get, you can get pretty granular down to the, the zip code level. Now, just as a FYI, if you're in an industry like, um, like real estate, uh, Google will notice that and they'll, they'll have you opt into a housing agreement just to make sure you're complying and stuff like uh, that. Okay. And Facebook has been doing that for a while, but Google has rolled that out too. Okay. Um, but yeah, and then you'll also have an option to um, to advertise on other search networks like Ask, uh, I believe, the, yeah, like Ask.com and stuff like that. So Google does have other search partners that they monetize their platforms too. So you can opt in or opt out of that. Okay. Uh, typically we'll opt in because the more coverage, the better in that sense. Right, right, exactly. So, so yeah, so from, from there, you're gonna go through the process of building that campaign, building those ad groups, um, building your ads. Um, we always recommend in each ad group, you want at least three ads. You want at least two extended uh, ads, text ads, and at least one responsive ad. And uh, the reason why with the responsive ads is Google is going to recommend it to you anyways. They're going to be like, just, they're going to give you these notifications of, hey, you're missing an opportunity, create your responsive ad. But the reason why it's so important is because actually from a testing perspective, it's great. A responsive ad allows you to put um, I think it's up to 10 different headlines, up to six, I believe, uh, descriptions. Um, and the system itself will rotate these variations okay. uh, and, and trigger them. So over time, you can actually see which headlines have the highest click-through rate, which descriptions have the highest click-through rate, and then create new ads based off that uh, data right there. <clears throat> so... So that's at a high level, uh, a search campaign building building that out. Okay. When it comes to display and remark and uh, video, you actually do want to take the same approach in terms of mapping out your campaign structure on paper. And in this case, you can target by keywords, but or you can target also by custom audiences. And so, uh, audiences is definitely very common. Like, you can create a custom audience by targeting people that have shown interest in specific subjects or topics or even have that have shown interest in certain brands, uh, you can target even people by that type of behavior. Hmm. Okay. So um, one strategy is say, for example, I have a all purpose cleaning product and I wanna you know, target people that have had an interest in simple green, I can do that uh, through, through display advertising uh, or video. Interesting. Um, so yeah, so I would, I would say definitely take that same approach of mapping it out on paper and then go into the interface and, and build it out. Okay. All right, great. Um, anything else we want to add before we before we close? Uh, before we close, I would say uh, I just want to touch on ad extensions for search campaigns because okay. ad extensions is a huge opportunity that a lot of people leave on the table. Okay. So when you're building, when you when you have your campaign basically built out for search, um, make sure you build out ad extensions. So where you'll find this at is underneath the ads tab, and then there will be a, a button that says extensions. So there's a ton of different ones in there, but some of the common ones are going to be site links, uh, call that call outs, uh, a call extension, um, and structured snippets. Those are kind of like, I mean, there's about eight or nine or maybe even 10, but those are four of the main ones um, that almost every business should have. Uh, because uh, basically what happens is that when these call extensions or when these ad extensions do appear on the search, um, on the search network, your ad actually looks much bigger and takes up more real estate. Hmm. And so uh, by taking up more real estate, you can actually drive up your click through rate as well. Okay. So yeah, and it, it doesn't cost, I mean, it'll maybe cost a little bit more per click, but 
you are definitely having more of a, a prominent appearance on the search network, and that's why you get a higher click-through rate. Yeah, and, and that kind of translates over. I don't want to get off into that, but, you know, like why we suggest using uh, pictures and videos when we post on LinkedIn and Facebook and other networks is it's not only that people are more interested in pictures and videos, but also if you think about it, if you have a... Uh, uh, just write a few lines of text. You take up about this much space. It's easy to get lost in the scroll where if you have a picture and video, now all of a sudden you've just expanded yep. your real estate. So that's good. All right, Bobby. Well, exactly. thanks again. Um, next week, we're going to be back with uh, how to enable the campaign and then also the maintenance part of that too. So thanks again. Uh, y'all reach out. If you need some help, uh, let Bobby and his team help you. And how could they get a hold of y'all, Bobby? Wonderful. No, thank you, Roy. I really appreciate it again. Uh, everyone can uh, reach us at signamarketing.com uh, or sig at Signa on is our social media handle everywhere. Uh, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook and Twitter. Yeah, we're very active on those channels. So if you have a question, definitely okay. don't be shy to, to send us a comment on there. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. Again, you can find us at www the business of business podcast.com. We're on all the major social medias, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. These videos will go up on YouTube as well. Uh, we are on all the major, major podcast platforms, iTunes, Google, Stitcher, Spotify. If we're not on one that you listen to, uh, give me a shout. I'll be glad to get us added to there. So until next week, thanks a lot.